Okay, welcome to another edition of Lion News. Lion News can be found at lionnews00.blogspot.com. Today is Sunday, January 16th, 2011. What are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about how not to fight in the fishbowl. Okay, what's the fishbowl? Well, it's essentially any fight that you have with the county, with the sheriff's department, with the county attorney, uh, a court case, a problem with the county commissioners, anything like that where you just focus 100% of your attention into that arena. Okay, let's use an example. Say you got a problem with the, uh, the cops. Okay, they're harassing you. So what you do is you complain to the cops. And all you do is you write letters to the cops and write letters to the cops and you went and go and talk to the cops and everything you do is with the cops. Okay? That's fighting in the fishbowl. Because what are the cops going to tell you? Well, obviously everything we've done is right, no matter whether it's right or wrong. So you, you're going through the same insanity over and over and over again because you're expecting a different result. All they're going to do is give you the same answer. Okay? That's fighting in the fishbowl. Same thing with the, if you have a court case, okay? If you're, if you're involved in some sort of malicious prosecution, well, the county attorney is involved in it, or the city prosecutor is involved in it, the judge is involved in it, and the crooked cops are involved in it. So all you're going to do is keep on filing motions in this crooked court and expect a different, uh, a different result? I mean, it's complete insanity. That's fighting in the fishbowl. Oh, so then what you want to do is you're going to you're going to sue them in a different court and you're just going to take that that fight from one fishbowl to another fishbowl. See? That's the same sort of insanity. Plus it costs you an arm and leg to do all this sort of stuff. See, what you want to do is think out of the box. And it, you know, I figured this out years ago. But the problem is if you try to explain it to people it goes, "Oh, no, no, no. That doesn't work. That doesn't work." You know, because that's just your theory. Well, see, what I always do is I start with a project, and then I see if I can find a book later on that proves exactly everything I was saying, okay? And a lot of, you know, I, I base all my beliefs on the Holy Scriptures, the, you know, the Word of God, the Bible, if you want to call it that. So, a lot of people don't believe that. You know, the these uh, atheists or agnostics or even supposed people who claim to be Christians, you know, don't even believe what's written there. So, you know, I could easily point out all these things there. But, you know, a lot of people couldn't care less, you know, what that says. Or, you know, they've got their own twist on it. So no matter what you say, it's it's wrong. So what I do is I try to find a book out in uh, what you'd call the secular world that matches everything that I do. So, you know, most people will believe something if it's written down on a piece of paper, okay? So, that's why I search out a book, and one of the books I've found is in right here. It's called Managing Activism, okay? It was written back in 2001. It's a guide to dealing with activists and pressure groups, okay? And it's written by Dennis, Denise Deegan. It's really a good book, okay? And uh, it'll tell you that if you are an individual who's fighting with say the county and you happen to, you happen to have one more person helping you you're considered an activist by the definition of this book actually you're pretty much an activist if you if you're fighting the county but they'll just call you a troublemaker or, you know they they've got all their words for you you know you're some extremist you know any sort of slanderous term they can come up to discredit you discredit, def defame, dehumanize, and demonize you, all right? So this is what the book, how the book describes an activist. Activists, also known as pressure groups, advocacy groups, activist groups, interest groups, and citizens groups, are formed when two or more people organize on behalf of a cause to exert pressure on an organization to change the way it functions, okay? Pressure is exerted through a wide range of tactics, including persuasion, education, direct pressure, or force. All right, let's get rid of these now. So we're pretty much done with those. And uh, here's some from my some information from my own notes from this book. 
it's on page two here, it says, in, increasing, in an increasingly pluralistic society, activism presents a growing threat to organizations of all shapes and sizes. And because activists employ a wide range of aggressive tactics, such as generating pu bad publicity, seeking government, inter seeking government and legislative intervention, encouraging boycotts, etc., they can cause severe disruption, including damage to reputation, sales, profitability, employee satisfaction, and, of course, share price. And that's on page two of the book, Managing Activism. Okay, now... If you look into anything about your county itself, you'll find out that it's a corporation, okay? So what they're saying is, that's the same thing they're saying about your corporation, the corporation of Pope County, that's my county that I live live in. It can be Swift County, Candyway County, whatever. They're all corporations. If you ask the county attorney, he'll tell you that, well, he works for the corporation. He'll tell you he was elected by the people, but essentially what he's saying is, yeah, you were dumb enough to vote me in, so I'm running this, this uh, corporation or this organization, so I'm going to do whatever I want. Okay? And actually, when he says he's voted in by the people, he actually means the, the important people got him voted in, the people with money and power. All right? So he couldn't care less about you. You're just, some, so you're just some fringe group, some activist. You know, So he couldn't care less about you, unless you can get some other people to help you to cause, you know destroy their reputation caused by bad publicity by just showing what actually they've done okay get your camera get your flyers and show what you've done because it creates bad publicity they can't stand that like I said destroys their reputation see it affects their profitability because who wants to come to lawless Pope County Minnesota and it starts undermining the 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 workers in Pope County so they don't have employee satisfaction anymore See, and it affects the share price. Again, they aren't going to profit from you in Pope County if you destroy their reputation. So that's what you want to do, is you want to stop fighting in the fishbowl and start getting your word out so you can cause pressure on these people. And that's what they don't want. Because, like I said, it's going to generate bad publicity. Well, who's, who are they afraid you're going to go to? Well, the media. Okay? But you're going to find out when you, when you deal with the media, they're nothing but a bunch of political whores, you know, also. So they aren't going to be interested in your story. If they are, then it's, you know, it's a fluke. But uh, what they're scared of is that you're going to get the public, see, publicity. You're going to inform the public of what they're doing. See, if the, if the average idiot, you know, finds out what's going on, they're going to be awful upset, one way or the other. See, I don't care if they're for me or against me. Either way, it works because my name is getting out there, my cause is getting out there, and either group is going to put pressure on the on the government to change, okay? Because they don't like that bad publicity getting out there. See, so it's to your advantage. And also, the government's going to try and cover this up. So, well, let's uh, get back over here. Like, uh, the uh, media, like I was saying, the media doesn't want this information getting out. So what they're going to try and do is they'll try and help you run a, run a smear campaign against you. So it just gives you an opportunity to, to uh, expose the media as a bunch of political whores. See, here's one that was run against myself and John Besser in, you know, in the Swift County uh, Monitor, in the Kirkhoven and Banner, in the West Central Tribune. You know, there was, they said some boogeyman was going around causing all sorts of you know, criminal activity and threatening people so they're going to increase safety and security in the courthouse. Now, all we were doing is exposing local corruption. But see, again, these political whores who claim to be, you know, the fourth pillar of the government couldn't care less about you or I. All they care about is their buddies. Because you'll find out that each one of these papers, well, not each one, but these papers strive to become the, uh, the county's paper of record. See, so there's a financial interest in these, in it for these political whores to, you know, to cover up the corruption. Because, you know, they love the money. They're more concerned about the money than they're concerned about you. See? And then also if you contact a, a, a board, you know, like, the, like I always advocate uh, filing complaints against the, the judges, you know, judge's license, the attorney's license, the cop's license. See, what you'll find out is, uh, these 
state boards. They're nothing but a bunch of political whores. So again, you expose the, the board as nothing but a bunch of political whores and you educate the public that they're political whores. Just like the same thing you would do with the, the newspapers. You get your information, you put it on a flyer or put it on a video or get a bullhorn and you in, educate the public. Like I said, they're scared of this bad publicity because it destroys reputations, destroys sales, destroys profitability, destroys employee satisfaction, and of course share price. See, that's all they're concerned about. They're concerned about their brand and their share price of the county. So you attack their reputation. Totally destroy it. But you stick to the truth because if they catch you doing these things, you know, making defaming them, you know, making up stuff, lying about them, they're going to crucify you. So that's the last thing you want to do is make up lies. Because they will totally destroy you. And rightfully so. Okay? So in this book, again, uh, Managing Activism, there's a, there's a summary of how not to deal with activists. Okay? Ignoring activists increases the likelihood that they will seek third-party intervention from the media, the government, and public to force change. Avoiding issues encourages them to spiral out of control. Okay, so what have you seen in Pope County? Well, they ran a smear campaign on me when I started educating the public. Okay, now they found out that by me filing complaints and, and uh, getting flyers out, putting out adverse information about them, they, they've tried to stop the, the major smear campaigns against me. I mean, there's small ones going out, you know, the whisper campaigns, but uh, you know, the front page stories, they've stopped those because they found out that doesn't work, because I use those to my advantage. Okay? Seeking public, seek to influence, influence public opinion in response to activist pressure is extremely difficult as people's behavior and attitude are hard to change, especially in turbulent, turbulent environment. Okay? Now, I've caused a very dangerous environment for them because I've educated the public on how corru corrupt these people are. So now, all of a sudden, the public is no longer blindly supporting them. Tom Larson, the, the former sheriff, didn't even run this time because he knew that the information out there was so bad about him that there's no chance he's going to win. Okay? Here, aggressive behavior such as trying to discredit groups, pub, public, groups publicly, initiate lawsuits against them, or seeking to undermine their funding is likely to re require endless financial and human resources. Groups prosper when threatened, and an organization's rep reputation can be badly damaged by, by being publicly presented as a bully. Okay. They maliciously prosecuted me on numerous occasions. I've turned it around to my advantage every single time. Okay? They, you know, they wanted to sue me. You know, that never came to never came to be. See? Cuz I always turn these situations around. So that's that's the problem with these people when they start to, you know, act like a bunch of crooks. See, you can turn all these situations around against them. Okay? Plus, you know, like I said, you know, they tried running the smear campaigns. They've got, uh, got, they've got groups inside of town trying to discredit me. I couldn't care less. That doesn't bother me at all. It just gets my name out even more. See, seeking to persuade activists so the bigger picture has limited effect as as activists resist being persuaded. You know, why would I listen to professional liars? They're nothing but political whores. You know, I'm not going to follow the big picture of you know, being a, you know, why I want to cover it to be a political whore, you know, that's insanity. No. See, I want to be what I believe. And that's, you know, of course, I go, and I have no problem telling people that I choose to be a Christian. Okay? So, and then international research shows that the above response has limited effect. See? So, when you fight against these activist groups, it just works to, to their advantage. But that's, you know, they follow the same old thinking that, you know, Attack, 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 attack. Destroy, destroy, destroy. See? It works to my advantage. I love it when those people do that. So people, stop fighting in the fishbowl. Start using different tactics. Start destroying their reputation. Start getting your message out. Start videoing. Start handing out flyers. Start getting bullhorns. Getting your message out. Thank you, and have a great day.